Hello YouTube, this is Josh from Instinct Design and today I'm going to be showing you the two methods of rigging in ZBrush. Um, the methods I'm going to be showing you today are the masking rigging method and the Z-sphere rigging. I will be showing you the pros and cons of these as well, repeating them at the end of the video. So first I'm going to show you how to use the masking method. So here's a model I made earlier on um, of a weird creature dragon thing. I'm not too sure what it is but you know, sort of experiment around, playing around, got a little bit bored and so I thought I'd do a quick speed sculpt, so this is what I came up with. It's about 10 million polys in its maximum form. So here you are, here it is. And to start with, what you do is you turn it down to its lowest geometry form, so on the right hand side you go down to geometry, you find the uh, sub layers and you turn it all the way down to the first subdivision level. This is so that when you do edit this it makes it, you know, it doesn't mess with the detail too much that would be in the you know sort of the upper subdivision levels. So what you'd simply do, hold control for the mask and mask whatever you want to move. So in this instance I will mask the head as such and just click outside the area whilst holding control just to select everything else rather than just the head. It's what it's the head that you want to move, remember that. And then I'll go into rotate. Rotate the head. Move it down to wherever I want to and leave it there. As obviously you can see um, <laughs> I haven't uh, what's the word? attached the uh, external things such as the teeth to the model um, so please do forgive me this is just save time for the tutorial purposes so again this is just to move the head down but the problem with this is as you saw when I rotated it just rotated on the spot messing up all the detail in this area here um, and if I take this into a you know higher subdivision level Go put it to the maximum one. Da -da 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 -da. Little time lapse. There we go. Let's look in, and if we look up here, what's happened is it's stretched all of this detail here. Um, that should look like this here, but obviously, as you can see, it's stretched, distorted it, and it's when I did move it, it has changed the general shape of the thing. Rather than it curving, it's sort of just gone duh duh straight down, and it doesn't look really nice. This can change towards the uh, sort of softness of the uh, masking, but again, this is very simple, very easy. But I would not suggest using this method. So the next method I will be using is the rigging with a Z sphere. So I'll now be showing you the method using uh, Z spheres to rig the model. So it's quite simple. As before, right hand side geometry, drop it all the way down to the first level into its low poly mode, and then what you do is go into Z plugin you go down and you highlight Z sphere rig obviously this wouldn't normally be on I've just turned this on um, and then you go into T pose mesh and what this does is it gets it into the ready sort of rigging mode and with a see through uh, sort of character there you guys can see it see through so you can see where you're going to be moving the Z spheres inside so to start with using the move tool just move that to wherever you want to start I like to start in the center and then with the draw tool you can just draw from this Z sphere and move it out wherever you want. I do suggest keeping symmetry on um, as it gets a bit faffy with the arms and legs and things like that. So press X to turn symmetry on. I'm going to draw a, a neck to bring that straight out there. I like to move from the front, draw it out, move to the side and stretch it across. What this does is it helps me keep it in position and always makes me check where it, you know, things are going to be moving. So again, draw it out to the side, draw it down. So what we've got here is your basic sort of head and neck join. When we have rigged this it will turn from this where basically you can click on anywhere on here or on the spheres and it will turn at that joint rather than having to sort of mask off a whole area which is quite handy and again on any of these uh, sections between the two spheres if you have draw on you can click and add another link part of the way through. Um, so I will now be showing a full version of this in a moment once I've rigged it. Uh, well, a full version, a very basic version, um, and showing you how to attach it to the outer skin. Okay, here's a very basic armature done. As you can see, I've got the shoulder joints in, sort of the hip joints in, joints at the bottom of the rib cage, neck, elbows, hands. Now, for this, for normal things, you can sort of do every single finger. If you are planning to move every single finger, 
um, but for just demonstrational purposes I've just done the one here and just a thumb as well just to add that in there okay so once you're at this stage I will now suggest that you do fill try and fill as much of this as you can so by that I mean using the scale tool and scaling up these balls um, the reason for this is um, a problem I did encounter with this actual model when I did rig it before is if you have it in a very sort of skinny thin mode when you do decide to move the arms out or something like that the rib cage will actually open up <laughs> it looks pretty freaky, it could be cool if that's what you want but um, if that's not what you want don't do it so again in the center using a sort of center mass scale it up until you get a decent size to where you want it so I'll go for there move it back into place and then sort of the lower neck joint there let's find it, there it is scale that back up again so that's looking a bit, a bit more fuller little shoulder joints here bring them out a bit further let's have a look, see how that's looking yeah, it's filling that a lot nicer now and the same with the waist here, can't forget about the waist that will be, be crazy as well if you don't do it so oops, there we go scale it out don't worry if it goes slightly outside the box but if it does you can always you know, shrink it back down a little bit again like that okay and then again with the shoulder joints they're probably sticking out a bit too much uh, move it back inside so it's not out as much as you can so that's probably an accept acceptable level to be sticking out um, let's try it again with the hips over here so fill that main backbone sort of lower butt area bring out the hips where are they? there we are sort of bring them out a little bit more move them across uh, to about here that's probably about acceptable about there um, don't worry too much about the legs, you're not really going to have much of a problem here it's just mainly with these inner body areas it tends to sort of be a bit temperamental so it's just a bit better to fill them all in there and make sure they're in the right position okay so the next stage is fairly simple now what you then do is you go down uh, on the right hand side into rigging and then in rigging you simply hit bind mesh and now what this has done it has attached the armature to the skin itself so I've been bit interference there with the mic it has attached it to the skin and using a rotate tool now I can pretty much move anything I want so there we are, hey, he's waving at you guys hey. <laughs> and you can sort of pose him in any position so for example I want to do him in a nice little running pose so let's bring that up there a bit more sort of bring that in and again I haven't to, I've, t I've kept symmetry on so symmetry off reverse back just a little bit as you've probably realized both arms are moving together that's because the symmetry is still on so hit X to turn it off now I can move each limb on its own manually which is quite handy so I might do it in a uh, sort of running pose where it's sort of running at you guys so bring the arm up there a bit more uh, the legs are always opposite so remember that guys if that one's forward that one's back little helpful little tip there bring it down leg flicks up a bit more like that we bend here like that. Probably not as cocked out as that. It's a bit weird. <laughs> and then uh, the right arm. That, bring it in. Bend that up there. Let's have a look. Yeah, pull that arm out just a little bit there. Probably that one as well. It's looking a bit strange otherwise. So bring that back. So it's nice and sort of tensed in, ready to explode out with the next dive. Same with this leg here. Bring it out. So it's just about to sort of spring out here yeah, so it looks like a little bit of a running pose there, might need to sort of move it at the waist just a little bit there we are, maybe a bit there maybe the head, just to make it look a little bit more aggressive, or could do it more direct, whoa, crazy head spin around, <laughs> exorcist stuff there um, bring that head up so he's looking at his target, there you go, he's after you guys and yeah, so this is a very simple way of doing this now um, and the next stage uh, is, as you probably noticed earlier on, a little message came up whilst uh, we brought into this mode. You're going to Z plugin again in Transpose Master and hit T pose subtool. What this does is it pretty much does everything that you need to do. It poses it, um, gets all the subdivision levels done, moves all the little objects that you need, and you now have it in that pose. And again, you can still at any point you can move the subdivision levels.
So here's a version I did earlier on, um, posing it in a way that I wanted to. This is in its highest uh, subdivision level, and as you can see, there's not really any stretching around where the sort of the levels are down here. The muscles sort of bunch up like real muscles would. So it's like someone clenching a muscle there, and that one again is sort of stretched out. And what you can now do is you can actually take this into a scene with other characters. And it's quite handy to do, so I'll now show you some examples of this, what I have done. So here's an example of the model in the scene. Um, here's a scene I did again make earlier. Um, I used the same method to pose the character on the left hand side as I did with the uh, the lizard guy. So sort of having a nice little punch in the jaw there going on with a very very basic alien planet scenery going on so you can always do this it makes it a lot more effective and your models sort of nice it's a good way of showing them off and the way to bring it in quick little tip sub tool right hand side drop down to insert and then you just bring in whatever you want um, yeah so this is an example of the uh, lizard and in a scene and just to reflect on earlier on with the two different types of rigging there's the mask rigging where the pros of that is that it's fast and easy the cons is that the fact that it loses quality it stretches and it, you know it sort of distorts the proportions of the model and then with the Z, uh, Z sphere rigging um, it's accurate you have more control over the shape uh, it sort of keeps proportions as you're moving the arms and things around it's easy to you know correct if something goes wrong um, and you can always change the position uh, to whatever you want at any point and the only con I could see with it thus far is that it's time consuming. So thanks for watching guys. Um, look out for the more tutorials coming out soon. There's the uh, anatomy one I'm currently working on as I've mentioned in, in another video. So look out for that guys. There's going to be some more tutorials on things like 3ds Max, uh, Photoshop and possibly different engine types for the uh, game systems. Again, if you want requests, feel free to send me a message. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. This is Instinct Design over and out.